Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Embody Me podcast. I'm here with another special guest, and we are talking about being your authentic self. As a business owner, a success-driven woman, really anybody, you want to be your authentic self. You want to have that success in your life without having to compromise who you really are. So this is going to be such a great topic to dive into. So hi, Nicole, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's so great to have you here. And I would love for you to give us a little bit of an introduction on who you are and what you do. Awesome. Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Tremaglio. I'm a pop culture expert, and I'm also a branding uh, consultant. So I work with small businesses on their brand personality and their messaging. So actually, to just speak back to what you just said, I help brands express who they are without having to compromise who they are. I think that's so important. Yes, I love that. And I would really love to hear, you know, your personal story of how you got here and why you do what you do. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a nonlinear trajectory and that's something that I have grown to really embrace. I think that we all assume that our paths are going to be linear and that the dots are going to connect nicely and neatly. And that's really not what happens ever. (laughs) And so knowing that any kind of opportunity, you never really know where it's going to lead. Instead of looking at that with fear, you can be like, wow, I mean, there's truly endless possibility. And so I actually have a background in fashion. Um, I grew up as a dancer and I wanted to pursue that and instead chose a more traditional route. I worked in retail and then I moved to New York City to work in corporate fashion. I was in the retail operations department for a few, I was going to say there was one multi-million, but I've mostly worked for billion dollar brands, really, really big names. And yeah, I would just kind of sit in my corporate office and look out the window and be like, there's more stuff out there. There's definitely more that I want to see and explore and pursue And I found that I had just been so influenced by really what society's expectations were for me, for my life, for my career. And I was living in downtown Manhattan in like this tiny, tiny apartment and working what looked like a really cool job. And I always just still felt like something was missing. And I'd really compartmentalized my identities. Um, As much as I love dance, I love fitness too. And so I'm like, who am I? Am I the fitness girl? Am I the fashion girl? Am I the dancer? Who am I? And in feeling like I had to choose among all of those things, I couldn't fully show up authentically or confidently as any of them. So I finally quit my corporate job. My last day was March 6th, 2020. So I don't have to tell you what happened after that. But needless to say, things did not go according to plan. I originally wanted to work with small businesses almost as an instructional designer to be able to create really powerful collateral, whether that's training guides or other materials that really resonated with employees because I don't like that whole clock in, clock out mentality. I want to go somewhere and feel like I'm making an impact and making a difference and using my voice to inspire people and have them want to show up for work every day. And I was focusing primarily on businesses in the fitness industry. But again, this was the beginning of 2020. So that no longer became a need that had to be fulfilled. And that's something extremely important when you have a business. It's great to know what you want to do, but you also have to be fulfilling your ideal client's need. And when I realized there wasn't a need, I quickly said, okay, what is a way that I can help people immediately? And so I began designing websites and newsletters, primarily for fitness professionals. And it worked. But after a while, I was like, something, again, still feels like it's missing. You think once you leave corporate, everything is like perfect and fine. And and people will always say to me, oh, wow, you quit corporate. What's that like? I hope to leave my job one day. And I'm like, Quitting is literally the easiest thing that you will do. 
out of everything that comes with entrepreneurship. So anyway, I thought as much as I don't mind doing the service work, it's a skill. I can do it. But is this truly my brightest that I can shine? Do I truly feel lit up by this work? And if my desire to innovate is so overwhelming, why am I serving a sector of people who are lagging behind the technological curve? So, because if you didn't already have a developed fitness platform online before last year, you know, especially as a brand, as opposed to an individual. Um, But anyway, so I'm like, okay, consulting. That is what I enjoy the most because you get to not just say, okay, what's your inspiration? And then you go work by yourself in your room, designing a website. It's like, we actually get to talk through things and we get to creatively solve problems together. And so I really enjoy doing that as well. And when it comes down to the personality and the messaging so much, especially in a heavily digital world, everyone is always talking about differentiation. Well, how do I stand out? There's so many yoga teachers or there's so many personal trainers. Why would someone choose me? And it's like, you better know the answer to that question. Otherwise, no one is going to choose you. And so people come to me because they're already putting something out there. Their message is there. They just feel like maybe it's not packing the real punch that it needs to because you already believe in yourself. It's just a matter of wording things so that your message that you put out there resonates with you. Because if it doesn't feel good to you already, how is it going to make sense to your client? And so essentially, that's what I help people do now with their brand voice, the personality, the tone, the messaging. And ultimately, that work helps shape your culture. And it helps you to really confidently portray who you are, again, without having to compromise who you are. If you're somebody who doesn't like traditional job titles or you work in a taboo industry, I say I do branding for extra brands and extra people because you shouldn't have to dull your sparkle, dim your, yeah, dim your light, dull your, dull your sparkle, all of those things. You shouldn't have to do any of that. So that's the summary. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing so much. And I really can resonate when you're saying, you know, a lot of people don't really know what their secret sauce is. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, and if you don't know what your secret sauce is, how the hell is anyone else supposed to know and get on board with that? So it is so important to really figure out, you know, what makes you so authentic, what makes you so interesting and unique and what makes you you and really portraying that out to the world. So for those of us who don't really know what our secret sauce is, How do we even go about finding that or not even finding it because it's already within us, but how do we go discovering what our secret sauce is? Yeah, absolutely. It's usually the thing that you don't like about yourself. It's letting your freak flag fly. It's doing all those things that you think that people are going to judge you for because you are holding on to judgment of yourself. And so you project that out and you think that people are going to think you're weird or people are going to be like, why is she talking about that? Or like, I don't care about that. But that's really not true. That's really just like your own limiting beliefs and insecurities holding you back. Because I realized I always thought that I had to prove myself because I worked in fashion that I always needed to sound very articulate and very intelligent because the industry kind of has this like, legally blonde kind of reputation where it's like, we just like shopping and we just wear cute outfits. And so I felt the need to overcompensate by having to say, no, I'm more than just somebody who wears cute outfits. But the thing is, who cares if you like to wear cute outfits? That's part of it. Are you kidding me? My personal aesthetic and style is a huge part of my identity. And so that is something that I want to talk about. When you realize that you have been conditioned and programmed to make yourself smaller, to make other people comfortable, it's like, whoa, I can actually be whatever I want to be. And so, right, that thing that you think makes you weird, that's actually something that really makes you unique and special. And we don't actually need everybody's approval. The people who see you expressing yourself authentically will notice and they will be drawn to you like a magnet. And something else I've heard is to follow your envy. 
because people tend to look at others who are expressing themselves authentically and being like, oh, she's this or he's that. And it's like, no, you're resentful of them because they're speaking their truth and you're not. And something that I love to say when envy comes up for people, they see someone who has what they wanted. And I say, no, they don't have what you wanted. They have what they wanted. They got what they wanted because they either did the work and maybe the work is not the same thing for them as it is for you. And so understanding that you cannot control the actions or outcomes of other people, you can only control what you can do. And so looking to someone else being like, they got that thing, who cares? They wanted that thing, they got it. That is literally nothing to do with you. But that is kind of a signal where it's like, clearly, if you are jealous of somebody else, it shows you what you want. I really not try not to even say the J word anymore. Like I actually, maybe 10 years ago or something, I made a new year's resolution to not use that word because are you jealous or are you, you know, to how to more effectively label that emotion, because that is just telling you what you are drawn toward. If you weren't jealous, that means you don't want to have anything to do with that thing. If you are, it means there's something that you have not done to get you there and you're realizing it and it's painful. I love that so much. And it's so funny because I was talking to a client recently about this same topic with jealousy. And it's like, look, if you see someone who ran the fastest mile and won the Olympics, do you feel jealous about, do you feel any emotion towards that? If the answer is no, as you said, it's because you don't, that's, that's not what you care about. That's not what lights you up. So when you find things or people that have what you want or are living a life that is what you want, take that as a sign that that is what you want to look, that's what you want to work towards and use that, you know, turn that jealousy into inspiration. Look at them. And instead of seeing all, you know, making up stories about all these negative things that we can create, How can we look at them from a positive light and how can we kind of learn from what they're doing and learn to be more true to ourselves? And something else that you said as well, it was really like other people's opinion of you is not your problem. What Mm -hmm. you think they're going to think about what you're going to do that, first of all, you probably don't even know right? They might be so inspired by you from going out there, living your truth and not caring what people think, but you're going to hold yourself back by by all of these imagined stories about what you assume everyone else is going to feel. Yeah, absolutely. I always say that you are the main character of your own story and so is everyone else. I am the center of my, it's the Nick show starring Nick. And then we have the Amber show starring Amber. Everyone has their own show. And I love looking at life in through that lens because you realize that the way that you perceive your own thoughts and actions, it's different than how other people see your thoughts and actions. You both have a point of view and perspective. Every single person, even if you're going through the same exact thing, everyone is experiencing their life from a different perspective. And when it comes to that, it's like, how can you not feel validated about your own experience? Because only you get to go through it. And when you're more confident in your own point of view, that makes it easier to identify as a collective. Because if you are always defining your experience through the lens of what you're speculating that somebody else thinks about your experience, that's robbing yourself of the joy that you can experience on a day-to-day basis. And I mean, that's not something I'm interested in doing. I really feel a zest for life. I've always just felt, I've always just felt this way. I think when I was younger, it more so showed up as a, I was just a very bubbly, happy, go lucky kind of person. And now I'm just like, how great is life. And in understanding that there are going to be ups and downs and there are going to be wins and losses and there is light and dark and just the dichotomies of everything, the contradictions of everything, it's messy and it's unfair and it makes no sense. And that's life. And that's what makes it great is that we don't know which side it's going to be. It's, it's not one or the other. It's an integration of both. Yes, I love that. And, you know, it's so important to 
just be grateful for where you are and what you have right now. You know, I always come back to this as well when I see someone on social media and there's a lot of people who are expanders for me, you know, who are living a life that I want or who have something that I hope to have one day as well. And when I always look to them for inspiration, I always have to take a step back as well and be grateful for where I am, how far I've come and what I have right now, because that is always that's going to be key and you know not always striving and chasing for something i feel it's so easy to once you achieve your goal you want to hit a bigger goal once mm -hmm. you you know achieve something or get something you enjoy it for you know 30 seconds and then you're on to the next thing so how can we you know have that presence and that gratitude for where we are while also striving for something better and i know we kind of went on a small little bit of a tangent here but it can be really hard to not give a fuck about what other people think like it's yeah. easier said than done and it's fucking challenging so what are some tips that we can give our listeners about how to not give a fuck <laughs> yeah it's really fun once you do it for anyone listening just so you know like it is totally worth it you kind of just have to be like what is the price that i am willing to pay is that abandoning myself is that limiting my opportunity for future success just know that caring what other people think to protect your ego from being bruised that comes at a cost you think that by keeping yourself safe you're good but that's not actually what it means because there is a trade-off in staying exactly where you are you are telling your future self i'm not ready to receive yet I'm not ready to change my life. I'm not ready to shine brightly. And I am not ready to fully embody the future self that I envision because I am too concerned with what other people have to say about my experience. And that's kind of a shitty truth to hear, to be honest, but it is the truth in that it costs so much more to stay the same than it does to go through the pain required for growth and change. And the absolute best way to not give a fuck about what anybody thinks is to cultivate self-trust. It is absolutely so essential and a huge lesson that I've learned because if you don't trust yourself over the opinions of other people, because people are always going to have something to say, People are going to have some opinion or be saying something and it truly doesn't matter. Even the people close to us, even whose opinions we truly value, you still always have to be like, I know because I'm my number one and I'm the main character of my show. And even if everyone else in my life has the best intentions for me, you have to trust yourself in your own decisions because if you don't, and you don't practice listening to your own voice, your sense of intuition, it gets so weak and you can barely hear that. And when you're really stuck and in a place where you're like, oh, I feel so stuck. I just want to break through to the other side. That's when you need that intuition. That's when you need to tap into that intuition because whenever you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do next? That's what your intuition tells you. How are you supposed to receive signals from your own intuition when you don't even trust yourself, when you consider yourself an unreliable narrator in your own story? You're not going to get anything done, to be honest. And so that is how you stop caring about what people think is realizing that no one gets to live your life except for you and empowering yourself to accept the autonomy that comes with having the ability to make your own decisions and seeing that as something that gives you power instead of something that kind of leaves you insecure and unsure. Because the reason that people care so much about what other people think is because they don't have that sense of intuition that's telling them what to do because they don't have that sense of trust. And it is difficult to make decisions. People can't even go to a restaurant and order between pancakes and waffles. They'll, be, they'll get the pancakes and go, oh, should I have gotten the waffles? Like, just come back next weekend and get the waffles. Like, everything in life is not this big life or death decision. Clearly you may, people obsess over making the right or wrong in quotes decision, but clearly it was the right decision for you at the time. If that version of you chose that thing, why would you not 
you wanted to get the pancakes. What is wrong with that? Clearly you that time made that decision. So you can't always have this, I guess it is kind of like an anxiety toward what if I make the wrong decision, because then you will never trust yourself to make your own decisions. And you will constantly let other people's opinions and even just your own opinion of that self-doubt, that's when that creeps in. You don't have time for that. You have decisions to be making. You, you are your old future self. So when you picture, you're sitting where you're sitting right now, you picture your future self, you picture this powerful person, this confident person. You don't picture someone who's like freaking out over the fact that they ordered pancakes. So make your past self proud too. I know we always talk about our future self, make your future self proud, do things that your future self will thank you for. That's wonderful advice, but you also have to acknowledge it's kind of like a gradient, you know, like we are so multidimensional as human beings. And I think of almost being like a gradation, like a, a lot of different colors and all of those colors fading were all of these past versions of you that you've integrated into your one self right now, because all of your lived experience dictates your reality and how you perceive what's going on in the present is obviously altered. It's so important to realize that you're kind of every version of yourself at once and that all of your experience, I think we let our past experiences hold us back when we really have to like have more gratitude and like more compassion for those people because they're all us. At one point it was future us. Now it's past us. And so acknowledging how far you've come and acknowledging that you still have a ways to go and that you're always a wonderful work in progress, not in a, oh, well, when I reach that milestone, I'll just have to reach the next one. It's like, no, there is no end game. Life, there's an end game. That's the only end game that we can all truly count on. And everything that happens in between, it's like you can choose to make your life fun and accept the challenges that are ahead of you. Or you can be like, what does that person think of my challenges? No, no. And I really love how you were saying, you know, there's really no right or wrong in the decisions that we make. And I think this really starts to get ingrained in us from when we're in school, right? Like I remember being in school and it's like, oh, but you have to go to college. You've got to get a good job because this and that. And if you don't get a good job, then you're going to be on the streets and homeless and, you know, all those crazy stories. And it gets us thinking like, oh, but if I make this decision, my life is going to be ruined. And that's really not the case. We all have our unique paths to take and there is no wrong path because even if you make a decision and it turns out not to be the outcome that you expected, for example, what can you learn from that? And how can Mm -hmm. that learning help you in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? You never know how one experience is going to benefit you in the long run. And I mean, just think about maybe your first relationship, right? You probably learned a lot from that relationship. It probably didn't work out, but now you understand what you want in a partner. Now you understand what you don't want in a relationship, perhaps. So really just, as you say, trusting in yourself, trusting that the reason why you're being guided to make this decision is for a reason. You might have a lesson within that. You might have a blessing within that, but there is something within every single decision decision that we make. And it's so important to really follow our intuition and follow that, you know, you are getting these messages and these thoughts for a reason. And I really love that, you know, the universe communicates with you through your thoughts. A lot of people don't really realize this, but all those times you're getting those thoughts of start that business, quit your job, go do this. You have something better for your life. That's your higher self. That's God. That's the universe get guiding you on what you should be doing and how you can really live that full expression and that amazing life that you deserve. But it's up to us to actually make those steps and actually take action on what it is that we're being guided to do. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a generator in human design and I'm much more into astrology, but a few years ago I heard about human design and I was like, I don't know about that because it was telling me things that I wasn't willing to accept. And it said how 
gener for generators, which is the most common design. It said that you need to respond. And I was like, I don't want to respond. I want to initiate. I want to not just sit back and wait for life to happen to me, but there's a difference between responding and reacting. And I was like, I want to be proactive, not reactive. And that theme has come up a lot in career and in life. But then I actually realized what responding truly means. I used to think that I would get a, a sign from the universe, like a big sign, a, I don't know, a strike of lightning, like something. There would be something that would be like, yes, you're on the right path. You're making the right decision. Because I was that person where I went to college. I didn't like it. I transferred to a different college. Okay, fine. I was working one job. Don't like that. Worked in a different capacity. Okay, don't like that. And you're getting this feeling like, when is something actually going to work out? I feel like there's just been this string of disappointments or jobs that I stayed in for too long or things like that. But in actuality, the universe doesn't send you a specific sign and that just determines your life path. The universe is in a constant state of, it's not sending you something. It's just presenting whatever reality is right now to you. And by responding, that means that something clicks within you. It's not an external force presenting something to you. It's not the universe putting out a silver platter being like, this is what you should do. It is you developing that self-trust, cultivating that little voice of intuition within you. And the more in tune you are with that, the easier it gets to hear and see those signs from the universe, which again, there's no one sign. It's a, the sign is that it clicks within yourself. And the idea that everything you need is truly within is also like a super, I would say that's just as hard as not caring about what other people think. It's like a very tough concept because it doesn't have to do with anything in the physical world. It's really like more on a spiritual or intellectual level where you're like, no, I finally realized that I have the answer. And that is the answer of what I should do. And for me, it was like, I, I always say, I love chasing the drama of a career path that was not meant for me. You know why I didn't like any of my fashion jobs? Because I shouldn't be working in that industry, you know? And as much as I love fashion, I realized that there are still ways, like I mentioned, my personal style and my aesthetic is a huge part of who I am, but I get to express it in my own way now on my own terms. And I always felt like I lost some of my identity when I worked for a brand because I would just be so about it. I would, and sometimes you would have to for work, but wear all of the clothes and just be totally consumed by the identity of the brand. And again, you lose yourself in that too. And I really encourage you guys who are listening to really take note of what are those thoughts that come into your head, right? Because so often we get an idea, but our ego goes, oh no, that's not possible. And all your limiting beliefs show up, all your doubts, your insecurities. And then you're like, oh, I wonder what my passion is. I wonder, you know, I don't get signs when it's like, actually you've been getting them all along but you've just been shutting them down every single moment you get them. And I really encourage you to take note because the things that you're dreaming about, the things that you're daydreaming about, like that is coming to you for a reason, right? That is really there for a reason. And I really urge you to listen to that and to trust that and to really go after that without letting your limiting beliefs stop you. Definitely. And it's very interesting because now kind of self-care and the pursuit of your own goals is very mainstream. And so people are all into journaling and meditating and writing intentions and writing a to-do list and all of these things, but it's not going to happen unless you couple that with physical action. And if you are daydreaming about it, then you can do it. It's in your consciousness. If you if something never even, a thought never even occurred to you, it's not even on your radar, then no, you're not going to. But as soon as you think, wow, what would it be like if I did that thing? 
what would it be like? Think, think about it and not just in that conceptual way. And I do like visualizing and journaling and things of that nature. But I found that a few years ago, that was all that I used to do. And it's like, that is letting you keep your dream as just that. It's allowing yourself to keep it as a fantasy instead of being like, well, what would I need to do in the real world to make this fantasy a reality? Okay, so tangible steps. What is that actually going to look like? Do I want to change career industries, for example? Okay, who is someone who has done that before? Who works in my new industry that I could meet, that I can connect with, that I can network with, that And I really, really don't like when people say pick your brain because that's like not specific enough. And if you want mentorship from someone or you want guidance from someone because they're doing something that you want to do, but you don't know how to make that thing a reality, you need to be as specific as possible when making asks to people. And of course, offer them something in return. I think the problem is when people they're just kind of insecure about what they can offer people. They're like, well, I would want to talk to that person, but what could I ever do for them? Again, it's the same thing as the secret sauce. If you don't know what you can offer someone, why would someone want to offer you anything? Again, they are the main character of their story. So why would they want to talk to you? That's what you exactly have to figure out. And when making a specific ask, hey, can I talk to you for 15 minutes about how you opened your own yoga studio or how you got funding from investors or how you this and get as absolutely, those are general examples, but like with those topics in mind, getting as granular as possible in, okay, how can that person help me? Okay. In return, you know, I would love to provide feedback about X, or I would like to share my expertise about Y. And that way you are setting yourself up to be in a really good position to be making connections, gaining knowledge, maybe even getting a little bit of experience there. And it's not like, oh, I was just journaling about it or I was just thinking about it. It's like, yeah, that side helps you get clearer on the vision, but you actually have to implement tangible steps in order to practically execute. Yes, you cannot journal or affirm your way to a million dollar business. <laughs> you have mm-hmm. to actually take that action. And when taking action, you have to really be your authentic self. You have to really show your secret sauce to the world. You have to really just understand, you know, what your secret sauce is. And that's why people like you, Nicole, come in to help people discover and uncover what it is. And then once you know, you've got to roll with it and have so much faith in self-love within yourself to say, you know what, who cares who doesn't like me? Who cares who has some shit to say? Because I like me because Mm -hmm. I'm aligned with what I'm doing. And because this is the right path for me and my people are gonna vibe with that. I mean, I'm sure you've seen lots of people on social media who I I like to call them like cookie cutter Karens, you know, like they are just all the same, same outfit, same hair, same bullshit type of captions. Mm -hmm. And do you wanna be the same? No, how can you be yourself and let your voice and let your light shine? Because that is how you are going to live a truly remarkable life. Yeah, absolutely. And I I have a strong aversion to cookie cutter things. And then I like to think of it in three phases, right? Cookie cutter is phase one, which is mainstream, which is everybody's doing everything the same. And whether it is on Instagram or in real life, there is some kind of societal expectation. There's some kind of mold that you need to fit into. And in some of my career, which I was side hustling in the fitness space, I had an events platform and I very much occupied the second lane phase, which I call anti. It was anti mainstream where it's like, no, we're different. And that's kind of what the body positivity movement became, to be honest because the mainstream was diet culture. Anti is body positivity being like, see, we're not diet culture. And it's like, dude, whether you are or you're not, the narrative around both of those lanes is still the mainstream. Whether you're talking about it or talking about avoiding it or talking about how you are not a part of it, they're still the topic of your conversation. How do you like that? So then 
the third lane phase where I reside currently, and I really enjoy it there. I call that the acceptance phase where you're like diet culture exists. That sucks. Whatever. I don't have anything to do with it. Body positivity. Okay. Maybe that's better, but I'm, I don't exist to be combating something else. I am in body acceptance. I am in body reality. I'm using that because I think that's, especially with like fitness and wellness, that's a very like clear example of how the mindset around the same thing can shift in terms of how good it makes you feel. You know, when you're in the mainstream, like people profit off your insecurities. So the norm is to have you feel like shit all the time. And then the anti-phase, you just feel angry because you feel like shit all the time. Whereas acceptance, it's like, whatever, the people that I want to follow, I will. The people that I don't, I don't. The things I want to believe, I will. The things I don't, I won't. And accepting that within you that again, you have the answers as opposed to like, people are going to try to persuade me one way or the other all the time. But ultimately I know what's best for me and my body and my mental health. And that's cool. Yes. I love that. Really just staying in your own lane and doing your own thing, not caring what other people are doing, not caring what their opinion is because their opinion has nothing to do with you just as your opinion really does not have to do with them. So I really, really love this. And do you have any last tips or words of wisdom for our listeners when it comes to really just fully being your authentic self? Yeah, absolutely. Just know that that thing that you are insecure about or you're afraid of, or the thing that's kind of holding you back from fully expressing yourself, that is the one thing that will set you free. I promise because I've gone through it myself and something you can do in case you're like, wait, how do I do that? Like, how do I actually figure out what expressing myself authentically looks like for me? Make a very short list. So I would say like three to five things max that you consider your core values. So for me, my core values are expression, enthusiasm, connection, and curiosity and every single decision that I make, whether it's what I write in my email newsletter, what I post on TikTok or Instagram, the outfits that I wear on a daily basis, how I carry myself, the way that I speak to people, it always connects back to my values. When I put on my outfit in the morning, is this how I want to express myself today? Is this the future me that I am trying to embody? Is this what future me is doing already? It's kind of funny. You're almost like tricking yourself into being your future self now, because that's how you actually become that person. Cause you already like trick question. You already are you and you physically will always be you. So anyway, every single decision that you make throughout the day, just go back to your list of core values and be like, am I living consistently to those values? Because when you live in your truth, everything that is not that, and that might be uncomfortable because when you're used to being in some patterns, all the things that are inconsistent, they'll just fall away. Thank you so much for all these tips. This was such a great conversation. And if people want to connect with you on social media, where can we find you? Absolutely. It's Nicole Tremaglio. I'll spell it for you really quickly. N-I-C-O-L-E-T-R-E-M-A-G-L-I-O on Instagram and TikTok. And that's the name of my website too. Perfect. And I will have your links in the show notes on our blog. Once again, thank you so much for being here. And of course, thank you all to everyone who was listening today on the Embody Me podcast.